For nearly 100 years, families of Evansville and surrounding communities have traveled out to Mesker Park Drive to enjoy the sights and sounds of exotic animals housed at Mesker Zoo. Ever since the gates opened in 1928, the zoo has been a hit and continues to bring enjoyment to Evansville residents. The first animals presented to the zoo were a pair of lions that were given to the city from the American Circus Corporation of Peru, Indiana. Local news photographer and cartoonist Carl K. Connect was instrumental in securing these and many other animals for what would become Mesker Zoo. They were kept in a small brick building that had iron bars on the front half and was enclosed with brick on the back half for the lion's shelter. Over time, the city slowly started to accumulate more and more animals, which turned this once small animal enclosure into a real zoo. Most of the animals were held in the general animal house. The building was a large brick structure lined with barred cages on each side. Zoo guests would walk down to the wide aisle through the center of the building to view the animals. Many of these cages were packed with multiple animals in each exhibit, with nothing else inside it. The cages were often bare and left the animals being unenriched and poorly exercised. For the next few years after, the zoo grew steadily, but the cages stayed the same. Over time, the enclosures slowly began to lose their bars and architects began to incorporate outdoor spaces and attempt to replicate a natural setting. Well, in the early 1900s, Carl Hagenbeck in Hamburg, Germany, started uh, exhibiting animals in a more natural setting. Uh, up till then, you would go to the zoo and you would see the animals in cages and it was sort of like going to visit animals in a jail. And Hagenbeck wanted to put these animals in a more natural setting, uh, get rid of the bars, and they used moats to contain the animals in their enclosures. This was revolutionary and that became sort of the standard for zoos all over the world. In 1930, Haney began to design the Bear Den. Mother Mary and baby Lindy were the first two bears at Evansville Zoo. The Bear Pit was the first of the barless enclosures constructed at Mesker Zoo, opening in July 1932. I remember it as a child, and I've been coming out here for well over 70 years. And the bear den was really exciting. At some time we had a polar bear, then we had either a Russian brown or maybe a brown bear. But it was really exciting because you would come to the zoo and you would see an animal that wasn't behind bars. You'd see it move freely about its enclosure and uh, it was just a really cool experience. The work was done by unemployed laborers, making it one of the first Great Depression relief projects in Evansville. The pit was reported to be one of the first in the nation to exist. They created the enclosure by using steel beams to mold the frame of the den. Then they used gunite to cover the walls of the frame to create steep faux rocks and walls so the animals stayed contained. In the front of the enclosures, they created deep concrete trenches that were several feet wide so that the animals could not escape. This also allowed visitors to view animals without any obstructions and observe them in their natural habitat. The den included large caves to shelter the animals from weather in the back but still allowed people to view them from the front. These rocks also provided shade for the animals on hot summer days and a cool place for the animals to sleep. It was kind of three-sided, tall on either side so the bears couldn't climb out the, the sides. And then the big thing about those barless exhibits were moats. They used the, a moat system, so it was a deep moat in the front so that the bears couldn't get over. And of course railings so that people couldn't get in. And so that's what helped, what helped create the barless aspect was the moats that things couldn't get out of and high walls that they couldn't climb over. But it gave you a sense of, of open air exhibits and gave the animals a sense of not being caged up. Because of its groundbreaking design, it gained national and even international recognition. Since the design of the zoo was so rare and out of the time period, Evansville was named one of the finest zoos in the country. Dennis Owl wrote in the 90s about the influential designs that Mesker Park had created. Gilmore M. Haney, the zoo director who became nationally recognized for his exhibit architecture, pioneering barless designs. The next year in 1933, one of the most unique animal enclosures in the country and one was constructed at Mesker. The Monkey Island, or Monkey Ship as it came to be called, was constructed. 
Absolutely. A monkey ship was always uh, exciting and uh, a crowd pleaser. Uh, initially, I think the monkeys that came on were leased. They, weren't, they didn't belong to the zoo. So they were leased. They came in in the spring and went out uh, just before winter. Uh, there were several types of monkeys there over the years. I think even maybe some lemurs at one point or another. And uh, at one point, there were even some small alligators there in the moat that, uh, by, the, by the ship. And the ship was designed after one of Christopher Columbus's ships, the Santa Maria. It was made out of concrete and painted colors to help it mimic the look of the real ship. It was placed in a basin of water surrounded by a concrete wall. The exhibit contained all the riggings and the construction of the monkey ship finished. The monkey ship, which was a sh boat ship surrounded by water, and they had like eight or ten monkeys on it, and they were climbing all over and doing their thing, etc. And we'd throw peanuts on them, and you know, they'd watch them. They'd try to reach out in the water and get them if they didn't didn't quite get far enough. As a kid, the first thing I did was run to the monkey boat. You know, I'm just like everybody else. You know, go down there to the monkey boat. Unlike Monkey Island at other zoos that were made of dirt and quickly became sanitation problems, the Mesker monkey ship had a concrete floor was filled with connections for a hose and was connected to the city sewer so workers could easily clean the enclosure. It was one of the most popular and well-remembered attractions at the zoo. A year later in 1934, a third major barless exhibit was constructed. The original Lion House was built on the west end of Mesker Park Drive, but later moved to the east end after the construction of the Lion's Den began. It had a lot of the same features as the Bear Den, with the large gunite walls, steep rocks, and caves, but it contained many different features that the Bear Den did not have. Its unique construction made it a one-of-a-kind in existence. It incorporated natural stone from the bottom of the Ohio River and one of the small lakes on Mesker's site. There was also an opening among the rocks that overlooked the Mesker Park Lake and African Velt. The Velt sat on the crown of the hill which got a full view of the lion's den. At the time, the zebras were the only animals in the space, but park director Gilmore Haney tried to obtain funding for antelope, a pair of wildebeest, a pair of African storks, and four marabou storks. They would complete the scene with plants and a communal watering hole in the center. In July of 1935, the Prairie Dog Village became the center of attraction. In the new exhibit, there was a rock backing with overhanging ledges and a moat in front that was just long enough where the prairie dogs couldn't jump out. There was also a layer of riprap of rock 10 feet below the surface. This allowed the prairie dogs to dig and burrow while the riprap kept them from digging out. The exhibit was located on the south end of the lion's den built up to the side of its bordering wall and next to a barred cave exhibit that often held animals like big cats and bears. In 1989, the monkeys stopped being displayed on the ship due to multiple reasons. The zoo not only wanted the monkeys in a more natural exhibit and something that was easier to clean, but the ship was also harming the monkeys. The monkey ship was restored in 2005 and later turned into a popular boat ride for children, giving the monkey ship a whole new life. Today, the monkey ship is not used at all, but remains at Mesker Park Zoo for a historical display. Far later in the 1990s, another barless exhibit was added, and this time it was Bunny the Elephant and Donna the Hippo, who had been at Mesker for many years, but finally got their own barless exhibits. This exhibit connected to the clay building that had steep moats around the edges of the enclosures, so that the elephant and hippo could not escape. Nine years later, Bunny developed a chronic foot disease, which is common for elephants that are in captivity for a long time. So for her health, she was retired, and lived at the Elephant Sanctuary in Tennessee for nearly a decade until she passed away in 2009. Donna the Hippo, on the other hand, got to enjoy the open exhibit for years after, all by herself. Today, barless exhibits are bigger than ever. Zoos all over the country now contain barless exhibits for a variety of different animals. There are no specific animals that are ineligible to live in barless enclosures. Each type of animal has a different requirement for how the exhibits are built so that they stay in and other animals and people stay out. The only thing holding the zoo back from all animals living in barless enclosures are the expenses. However, 
Mesker has been able to follow their original path of creating natural enclosures for many of their inhabitants and continuing the tradition of creating timeless barless exhibits like Gilmore Haney would have wanted. Many of the original barless enclosures are sadly no longer in use. In 1996, the Baird Inn shut down after the exterior started to decay and rocks began crumbling. The exhibit was evacuated and removed not too long after. Because of the dangerous conditions of the exhibit, the den was bulldozed and the lot was filled in. In 2001, the Lion's Den closed due to similar reasons. The enclosure was no longer safe for the remaining lion to live in, so she was moved to live in the Asia exhibit. The lion exhibit is still there today and rests next to the giraffes, zebras, and sitatungas. The enclosure is fenced off from the public and overgrown with foliage. However, on occasion, visitors may be able to catch a glimpse of the historical den and prairie dog exhibit through the weeds on a sunny day. In the Amazonia exhibit, there are a variety of animals living in the open air exhibits. There are porcupines separated by a steep drop off where people can view them in the trees from the bridge or they can go a little further in the trail and see them from under where they are separated by a moat. There is also a tapir next to the porcupine. The land that the tapir is on is also separated by a steep wall where people can view it from and a moat that separates the island from the visitor's path. At the entrance of the zoo, the newest barless exhibit greets you as you walk in, the African penguins who live in a large barless enclosure. The water separates the guests from the penguins, but there is also glass so you can view the penguins underwater. The large gunite rock structure in the back of the exhibit not only provides shade for them, but also caves for shelter and a boundary so the penguins cannot escape but it also doubles as a cover to hide the inside enclosures where the penguins can go to meet their keeper for training sessions, feedings, or even just to get away from the harsh weather conditions. So you may be wondering what's next for the Mesker Park Zoo. We're not sure, but as Mesker approaches its 100th anniversary, it remains an important part of the Evansville community. Although the barless enclosures from the 30s and 40s have been replaced with more modern, more spacious, and safer exhibits, today families may continue to make special memories for the years to come. This has been an F.J. Wright's Feel the History production.